So Blizzard has finally put out the changes that are going to be happening today on June 27th. So I wanted to quickly recap what's happening. Now, I'm not going to cover things like the bug fixes, the gameplay fixes. A lot of these are addressing problems people have had. If you want to see these more specifically, I will have them linked down below with this post. Additionally, they've also changed things with the local co-op, some of the quest bugs. They made a lot of nice changes to the UI as well, which I'm excited to see in game. Then again, there's more miscellaneous changes, but where things get interesting are in the gameplay adjustments. And then all of the classes actually have received pretty significant changes, most being buffs. And I'll kind of cover those pretty briefly and try to keep this video as short as possible for you to give a little update. But the biggest thing here, like I said, is the experience changes they've made. So you'll notice here that they've significantly increased the experience awarded for Nightmare Dungeons. They've also significantly increased the experience gained from killing monsters in a Nightmare Dungeon. So both sources of XP from Nightmare Dungeons, this being more important, obviously, the killing monsters in the Nightmare Dungeon. But Nightmare Dungeons are now much more worthwhile to do for XP. So if you're doing a lot of group content, it's going to be more worthwhile to do Nightmare Dungeons now, which... It makes sense that that's the case because again, when you're doing nightmare dungeons, you're getting glyph XP, you're getting better loot from than you would in normal dungeons. And then also now you're going to be getting better XP, which is very important. They've also changed Helltide. There's a lot more experience you get when you open a chest. Like if you're opening the chest of mysteries, they've also increased the XP for doing whisper tasks, which is cool. And then they seem to have fixed an issue where no XP was awarded for the holdout style event. I'm not sure really what this was. I didn't experience this myself, but good to see they're fixing things regardless. Then they've also buffed the Helltide roaming bosses. There's better loot off of them, which is cool. You can now also directly teleport to your nightmare dungeon, which is awesome. Then we have the class changes. So Barbarian across the board, I've reviewed all of these changes. All of these are buffs. Some of the biggest ones, Lunging Strike got a uh, Fury generation increase, which is going to be nice for the Hammer of the Ancients builds and a few other builds. Um, some other skills that were previously not used super often, like Bash, Frenzy, Flay, things like this all got brought up in numbers. So it's exciting to see the Barbarian might have more options open up to them. Double swing, kick, charge, leap. The slow effect was increased. Iron skin gives more maximum life. Call of the Ancients goes from 10 to 20% attack speed. Again, like you can see here, these are all buffs. And I'm really excited to see how the Barbarian Theory Crafters react to these changes. If any new builds emerge, which I think they very well could because there's a ton of changes they made in these uh, to all the skills and some of the aspects, as you can see here. Druid also got a bunch of changes. Not really to any of the skills that are used in most of the meta builds right now, but you'll see here Earthspite got a little increase, so it might make the Landslide build a little bit better. Windshear got a small buff. Claw also got a small buff. Maul base damage was increased as well. Lightning Storm duration was increased, and the Immobilize was increased from 8 to 12%. Shred got an increase, so that's pretty cool for the, uh, for the Poison Wolf build. Wolves cooldown got reduced, and the Lucky Hit chance on the Fortify proc got increased from 10 to 40%. And again, a lot of these changes here are things that we'll have to see how they turn out in testing. Right now, a lot of the builds don't use a ton of these skills. Like Hurricane, for example, is used, but the base damage being increased isn't a huge deal, in my opinion. Some of the passives were changed around as well. And the legendary aspects have also seen some changes. So Rune Workers got a little bit of a flat damage increase. Mangled Chance went up by 10%. Seismic Shift cooldown went down by 0.5 seconds. Then Blurred Beast damage is increased by 10%. For Necromancer, I'm not going to summarize all these changes because I personally haven't played Necro yet, but I've reviewed all these changes. All these changes are buffs and decreases in cooldowns. I'm really excited to see how this shakes up for Necromancers. Then if you're a viewer of mine, you probably care most about the rogue changes. Unfortunately, it looks like we haven't seen a lot of changes to the builds that are currently being used. The only things I've seen here, for example, Forceful Arrow got a 2% damage buff. Barrage got a 2% damage buff. This is actually going to mean a pretty big deal for Barrage, as I already think it was one of the stronger core skill options. So I'm kind of interested to see they decided to buff Barrage. They've also changed Count Traps, so there's a little bit more slowing effect by 5%. Smoke Grenade cooldown reduced by 2 seconds. Reign of Arrows, which I know a lot of you are big fans of, in my community at least, got a small little buff. Cool to see. And then volley base damage is increased. Interestingly as well, the uh, close quarters combat passive has seen a little buff. So I'm interested to see if this is now going to feel a little bit better. I'm probably going to go test this myself. Then also Umbra's aspect saw a little buff. So I think uh, there were a lot of builds previously that recommended using this on your amulet. I think with this 40 to 60% range now, it's going to make the most sense to have it on your helmet. And then the uh, death trap unique also got a uh, cooldown reduction buff on the top end percent. The bottom end percent of 15% is the same. Then finally for the Sork, all around the board, from what I've reviewed here, all these are small minor buffs to a lot of the skills that haven't seen a lot of love so far, except for Blizzard, I am shocked to see this, got a 10% base damage increase, which kind of blows my mind considering how good that build is, especially at killing Lilith. I'm really surprised to see this, but Blizzard did say it was going to be a buff round of changes, so here we have it. But anyway, I haven't been playing Stork myself, so I don't want to sum up the Stork changes. The only one I was really shocked to see, like I said, was the Blizzard base damage increase. Kind of crazy. But these are the balance changes. Again, I'm going to have them linked below. But I like to keep my videos short and to the point. 
Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Valued, and I'll see you in the next one.